Abdul the Butcher coming into action later on here in this matchup. And there's a guy, and I told you, Jackie, earlier, I've managed him. I've seen the, the devious, diabolical nature of this man. He will stoop to, to any level. He will go lower than a net at a luau. When you see that man, you don't know what to expect. And the best thing is just expect everything. He goes lower than, like I pointed out, uh, as, as they get. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to jump the guy behind the curtain here. I mean, Abdullah, and I, like I said, a legendary matchup with, say, uh, Carlos Colon, who uh, we've been in many matchups with. The sneak attacks, the powder, uh, the ring bells, uh, sledgehammers, forks. I can go on with some of the implements of destruction employed by Abdul the Butcher. I've never heard anybody say this, but you can say that Abdul the Butcher is the grandfather of hardcore wrestling. Look at this large man here from NWA, Texas. He's got the he's got something in his hand. He's a large man here. That's Ricky King, sure is. And he's got a belt. So you know this man has got a, a background. He's walking in with some type of belt representing NWA Texas. Well, He's he got to have something going on. Texas took the gold in the tag team. Now we're going to see what he can do here today to represent the great state of Texas. But like you pointed out, Jackie, you're talking, you're going into another league. You may be a great guy in NWA Texas, not to take anyway, anything away from that fine promotion in Texas. But you're talking a man who transcends pro wrestling, an international superstar. When he sets foot anywhere in the globe, it's new. Abdul the Butcher has competed with you over in All Japan Pro Wrestling, has competed at the World Wrestling Council in Puerto Rico, everywhere. From Canada to New Zealand, from, from Argentina to Finland, Abdul the Butcher is one of the most recognized figures in pro wrestling. You talk about matches with the Sheik, oh, Carlos Colon. Living legend himself, Abdul the legend, Butcher. Uh, the, the founding father. Heck with being the grandfather, the founding father of hardcore wrestling. How about that? I agree with that. With the sequined, sequined gear here by Abdullah. Don't let uh, that boy, don't let that blind you because anything can be employed here by Abdullah the Butcher. Well, you see the trademark boots with the point, the pointed toe. Loaded boots, Jackie, I'm telling you. I've been in that match. Man from Sudan, Abdul the Butcher. And what do you think is going through Rocket King's mind? Uh, trying to stay alive, I would say. Not just surviving this match, not defending this belt. I'm thinking survival. I've been in Abdul's court. I have been, and I know the mindset. And I don't want to get into that mindset, by the way. But I know the mindset of Abdullah. It's not just wins and losses. Sometimes it's more important for Abdullah to send a message. Destruction. Look how methodical he is walking in. He's not in any hurry. Abdullah the Butcher, also a successful entrepreneur outside of pro wrestling, an investor. He's very uh, successful in the business community in Atlanta, Georgia. Has invested his money well, as you might think, with an international superstar who has attained the riches, financial and otherwise, that he has. Let's go to Marty Leffler for the introductions. Abdul the Butcher doesn't care if he's the Mississippi State Champion. Abdul the Butcher's already gone to the boots. He's got an object right now, and he's going to the forehead, I guarantee you, of King here. Oh, there it is. It could be a fork. It could be a fork, because I saw him use it countless hundreds of times versus Carlos Colon. Ricky King, I got one question I think for it you. is a fork, Jackie. So you want to be a pro wrestler, huh? Well, this is what it's all about, stepping into the ring with Abdul the Butcher, who's willing to do anything. It is a fork, Jackie. It is a there fork. Is. I told you. I called it before the matchup. Abdul knows the rest. Of the, there are no rules that apply to Abdul. He's broken out the fork. He's got the loaded boots with the hooks match. on him. We've been in this match for 30 seconds, and Ricky King is already in major trouble. I'm telling you, that fork is going into your forehead. It doesn't care if it's rare or well done. That fork is coming right through. The blood's flowing. 
What do you expect with Abdul the Butcher but blood flowing? Well, the Butcher, look, he does, he's not even thinking about the pin right now. He's not even thinking about covering that guy right now. He's going to have his fun. You notice another thing? The referee's not getting too close to say anything to Abdul. Or if he is, he's not being emphatic with Abdul. I've seen many a referee go over that top rope when Abdul the Butcher's been in the ring. And you, can, you can bet this. Everybody in the arena, they're definitely paying attention to this match right here. I tell you, if you're in the arena, you got to be watching out for Abdul exactly. the Butcher. If you're in the upper deck, if you're on ringside, if you're in the locker room, if you're in the concession stand, if you're in the bathroom, if Abdul the Butcher's in the building, you better be watching the back. I've seen him clear out a, a lot of aisles and a lot of crowds. He can walk right through and the people scattered like the Red Sea. We were in uh, Nassau, wrestling at Nassau Stadium. I was managing Abdul against Dory Funk Jr. And he cleared out nearly 10,000 people at Nassau Stadium. The fight went over, out onto the beach area, went down to a deli, down the road to the stadium. And, and Abdul the Butcher cleaned house on a five-figure crowd as the, he, he grabbed the chair here on King, the Mississippi State Champion from NWA, Mississippi, Texas. And Ricky King, I tell you what, you got to feel for that guy. He's in there taking all that punishment. He's trained hard. He's come from Iowa State. He thought he had his big shot to make a name against someone like Abdullah the Butcher. And what happens? You just get mutilated. It's not the first time it's happened. It won't be the last. Ricky King is in There's definite the trouble. There's the fork again. There's the fork again. Ricky King hasn't done one thing in this matchup except walk into the ring and get between the ropes. He hasn't done a single thing here. Look at that. He, he's stretching the, the, the cuts and the wounds on the forehead. He's putting the fork in his mouth. This guy doesn't have a chance. I'll tell you what, Kevin. He, He's going to be lucky to survive this. And Abdullah, like I said before, he won't even go for the pin. I don't think anyone is. Until he's had his fun. Uh, just breaking the, the fork onto the forehead. Just just opening up gaping wounds on King. This is unbelievable. We, we might have to get some type of... Uh, some type of... Uh, some type of outside intervention to stop it. This is getting to the point... Well, we may have to look at uh, medical attention here for King. And I can tell you, tell you one thing: just when you, just when you think you're safe, gosh, I'm out of the I'm out of the ring, and he's still in there. You're not safe. I think you're in more worse danger by being outside of the ring with Abdullah. Well, you never know what to expect. He threw the man outside right now. He's just taking a little breather. He's going to be right back on him. I can guarantee you that. I see this the ring bell right there. I wouldn't be surprised if this guy somehow gets hit with the ring bell. He's already broke. I, I, I predicted the fork. I'm going on record now. I, I bet the, the ring bell comes into play at some point. Well, Ricky King, he's a competitor. He's not going to give up. He could have just walked back to the dressing room. He's a man. He's got a lot of pride. He's going to try to fight this out, but I, it doesn't look like he's got it. I don't know if he had the faculties, Jackie. I think he's so dazed. He's so he's in shock right now. I don't think he. I don't think he could have walked back. I don't. He doesn't know where he is right now. He doesn't know he's at the Grady Cole Center at the 51st annual NWA convention. He's just staggering right now. He's trying to get up from the ring. Well, it's got to be like a bad dream, that's for sure. A nightmare. <laughs> Get that fork again. There's the fork Another again. Time. He's been doing it for years, year after year after year. How about the matchup with Ivan Cola? Another great NWA superstar oh, of years past. I've seen those matches. Here's your Brody, the list goes on. Look at, and he just, he cannot even get into the ring. Oh, and Abdullah, well, uh, it was either the fork to the forehead or over the top rope for the ref. I knew that wouldn't last. The first time he got out of line was the ref. That was it for him. Now, Extreme. Team Extreme's coming in here, it looks like. Not a very wise move to run into the ring when Abdul like out the, there. Uh, That's the cue ball. Yeah, yeah. These are the guys from NWA Michigan. They're coming in, and they're not having much success with Abdullah. They're getting the fork treatment. Well, the Motor City Madman, that's Q right there, uh, taking it, they've come learning the about the road. What, what being a pro wrestler is all about. Abdul the look, Butcher, he's caught a lot look of young Look at Q's men head. It's just, it's just, uh, it looks like a road map of, of, of wounds. Yeah, he's already, uh, he's already in trouble. Oh, my. Ah, ah. He's in trouble. They should have stayed back in the dressing room. You know, unless I'm uh, on the payroll with Abdullah, I'm not getting anywhere near the ring. I've been there too many times. I've seen it. I've seen the gore. I've seen the carnage. 
This manager doesn't even have any control. Over he could turn on the manager, believe me, Jackie. He could turn on that manager at a second's notice if, if something made him do that. He could turn on that manager in no time. I've seen it happen. He's got three men down, four counting the referee. This is absolute carnage here. Q's in trouble. Q needs to roll out there. He tried to help out Ricky King. I don't know if there's enough law enforcement in the building to stop this. Wait a Who's minute. This? Ronnie, is Wait this a Ronnie minute. Garvin? Is that, that's the oh, hands of stone, be. Ron Garvin. Now, there's one guy who could uh, equal the scales of justice, if you will. Look at that. You got it. You got the fork. And now Ronnie Garvin with the fork inside those hands of stone. What? Uh, what? Superstar Ronnie Garvin, a former NWA world champion. Well, he's not a young kid trying to make a name, that's for sure. He's got a name himself. And he's showing Abdul the Butcher that some people will fight back. One of the great superstars in the history of pro wrestling, Ron Garvin from Canada. Still in great shape. Still Look at in him. just, he's just a rock. He is, up. I, I believe me, Jackie, I've been in the ring with Ron Garvin. I have felt the Garvin stomp. Oh, Abdul is in now. He's split That manager's open. in trouble, Jackie. Right now, I hear that manager is in trouble. He's going to go around the world with Ron Garvin before this is over. Oh, yeah, he's I, right, I, right, he got him. the fork to him. He's lucky if he doesn't get stomped right now. Look at Garvin. Garvin, not just a guy who is tough in the ring. This guy, you could drop him literally in a in, in a remote area on the globe, anywhere, and he could survive with sure nothing. With just he could eat raw, he could eat dead birds and drink polluted water, and he'd survive. He's just a tough man, and he's uh, look what he's doing, Abdul the Butcher. I mean, Abdul the Butcher was tired. He had already beat up four men, but uh, Ronnie Garvin came in and. and he probably felt for Ricky King, you know, he, Ronnie Garvin was a rookie at one time, was a young man at one time. Uh, he probably felt uh, exactly what was going on. He just felt like he had to do something. Not to mention these guys have probably met up in their careers. I mean, you're talking about Ron Garvin. Uh, Ron Garvin has been the universal champion in, at the World Wrestling Council in Puerto, Rico, in Puerto Rico, Capital Sports Promotions, where Abdullah was a competitor with Carlos Colon and and many of the top stars in the in the Caribbean and South America, and Ron Garvin has had to face Abdullah. Look, look, at, look at the blood just pouring out of Abdullah. Ron Garvin now with the fork. It's not just it's coming out of the shoulder. It's coming out of the shoulder, the forehead. Ron Garvin now. Now we're getting some of that hands of stone. And now, now Abdullah with a choke. And you don't know what's in that. Those are taped hands, by the way, Jack. You don't know what's inside the tape. I've seen him stuff objects inside the tape. Sharp objects. Look at the fans. They're all on their feet right here. I wouldn't be on my feet. I'd be out the door. They haven't seen action like this in a long time. They better watch out. This is liable to go into the crowd. You've seen it before. There's some more of that hands of stone. The referee, I'm, I'm just getting out of dodge. Looks like they're fighting back towards the locker control. room area. I don't know where they're going. Abdullah coming back. He hadn't had enough yet. He wants some more Ronnie Garvin. Going into the guardrail and decide into the some of the uh, administrative areas of the uh, convention center. There goes a looks like a beverage. It went into the face of the referee. They're going into the stage area. There's a chair. And that looks like some type of a, an ironing board. Garvin with some solid solid chops to Abdullah. They've gone into the bleacher area. This is just absolutely insane. You notice here. where they go. The crowd scatters. We've seen that over and over. Ow. There goes, I don't know what that is. It's either an ironing board or a top to some type of uh, container. And it's just seeming, it uh, doesn't even, there's a chair and no effect seemingly on Abdullah. Abdullah reeling now. Trying to get away maybe. Now he's going up the stairs. Maybe Abdullah has said, well, I've inflicted enough damage on these young guys, but Ron Garvin's another story. And some of the competitors are just getting out of the way. Abdul the Butcher, a legend in the NWA, seemingly has had enough. Of, he's got he's got the lights. Some of the light, and that's an expensive setup right there. He'll do a lot of damage. He'll cost you a lot of money. He'll cost the NWA promoters a lot of money if you don't control him. If you don't get security out here right now. His manager is uh, having. Not having much success with Abdullah. Abdullah now going behind the curtain. Almost uh, dismantling the light fixtures here. 
This is just an absolutely wild setup here as we focus on the hands of stone, former NWA World Heavyweight Champion Ron Garvin. All I can say is it's a, it's a good thing that Ronnie Garvin was here. Ricky King is a very lucky man.